Uh, Urmil, if I can ask you this, uh, in, 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 in context to what uh, uh, Kumut just mentioned, uh, how would you approach this if someone uh, called you up, maybe a donor coordinator, maybe a family called you up saying, Dr. Urmil, uh, this is the situation where my young brother, who is 23 years of age, who has no comorbidities, is now uh, diagnosed COVID positive. He's in the hospital on high flow oxygen. The doctors say that his saturation is dropping. He might probably require mechanical ventilation. And probably from there on, we do not know where it would go. He might also require an ECMO. So how would you probably address this issue? Because this seems to be a common, common, uh, you know, a common a line of complaint or a, or a, a common, uh, what would I say, uh, a, a panic call to a, to a transplant coordinator or a, or a donor coordinator. Yeah, I mean, it's a very uh, practical question. I mean, in the second wave specifically, we have seen a lot many of these referrals coming, uh, you know, with the impending, uh, you know, intubation, impending uh, mechanical ventilation patient on NIV of 100%, PF ratios down, and then the referrals come uh, to the team about how to go ahead. So I think the first important is to, you know, have a detailed clinical summary uh, obtained from the, the treating hospital, speak to the treating doctor, understand what has the treatment the patient has received, uh, discuss with the family about the course of the disease. And also we have a assessment form prepared where it's almost a 15 points to have a basic idea about what is the general condition of the patient, whether the patient has a candidacy for even initiating ECMO or not, uh, later on would be the question about the transplant, but first and foremost to know whether patient has a single organ dysfunction, whether or patient is into a multi-organ dysfunction, what is the age, what is the BMI, that is the height and weight. So basically understanding the, the general candidacy of the patient, uh, you know, getting a detailed clinical history, when was the RT-PCR positive, when did the uh, acute lung injury start because if we see the guidelines, I mean, whatever the 10 points guidelines, whatever we have, whether it is ISHLT or from the Toronto group, they have clear cut mentioned that it has to be four to six weeks from the initial clinical signs of respiratory failure. Now, if we underline this statement of initial clinical signs of respiratory failure. So for that, it is very important to go into the detailed clinical history about to know when the patient started deteriorating, whether the patient was earlier on oxygen, when to NRBM, then to NIV support, and then got intubated. So I think interacting uh, with the treating doctor, very important to understand the course of the disease, interacting with the family to understand what all what are their expectations, and also getting a, a brief assessment form filled up where we would have a general idea about whether it's a single organ or multi-organ, what is the neurology of the patient, how is the neuromuscular condition. So once we have these details, then again, we have a second round of communication with the treating doctor, with the family to explain what all possible options such patients have about going ahead. Now, if the patient is on NIV 100% and now there is an impending mechanical ventilation, I think now the general consensus worldwide is to go for an early intubation not to have a delayed or a terminal intubation. Once mechanically ventilated, then the question comes about how is the compliance of the lung? How are the PF ratios? And then accordingly, we can take ahead about, you know, there are various methods available to, you know, improve the PF ratios for the initial phase of the ERDS, do a recruitment, do a prone ventilation, diuresis, prevent fluid overload. If, if that doesn't work, the PF ratios worsen, the carbon dioxide goes up, then we have to think about ECMO. So I think it is a step-by-step a, a -step approach to a, a query or the referral which comes and it has to be a team approach where the family has to make a, uh, has to decide, the treating doctor has to decide and we have to decide. So it's basically a teamwork where the consensus is decided upon and then the things are taken ahead. 